In today's video, we're going to discuss the handout <clears throat> from Chapter 4, where we look at risk and historical returns. And I have four questions, uh, A, B, C, and D. And so these four questions we're going, to, we're going to answer using some statistics to help us understand the risks and returns of stocks. Okay, so here I have, this is example one, and I have two stocks, stock A and stock B, and I have five years worth of returns, rate of returns. So the first thing we're going to do is try to figure out which stock is more risky. So in question A, on the basis of review, which stock appears more risky and why? So we're just going to, no math, we're just going to look at the two stocks and say, which of these two stocks look more risky? Now, most people will say stock A because we have returns of you know 1%, 4%, and then up to 19%. So we have a really um, mixed bags of high and low returns. That seems a lot more riskier than stock B that has returns that have a more consistent um, double digit uh, returns, the lowest return being 8%, the lowest single digit return is 8% and the highest 16%. So most people would just look at this and say that stock B is less risky. Uh, part B, calculate the standard deviation and coefficient of variation for each, each stock and example. Okay, so first thing we have to do is calculate average return. So I am going to actually use a formula and actually I'm going to go to the formula tab and look up auto sum the average And again, I'm just going to go to auto sum and click average. And there's the actual formula equals average and then bracket the range C11 to C15 bracket. So there's the formula if you wanted to. And remember that these spreadsheets are online and you can look in the cells. I have answer keys uh, next to the handouts and you can actually see the formulas and how it's calculated. So you can see that they both have the same average return. So that actually means that they're comparable using standard deviation alone. So over here, I'm just going to populate the average return for stock A. So we calculated the average return for stock A was 12%. And I'm going to format that to be a percent. And then I'm going to actually use F4 key to lock in the position. So that way, when I copy this down, I can just pull this down. And that dollar sign before the B and dollar sign before the 16 are absolute positions and it just locks it in so I can easily copy it down. Now in column three here, I'm going to, um, actually I'm gonna work with, instead of working with percentages, I'm just gonna work with whole numbers to make the calculations a little bit easier. So it's going to convert these to whole numbers. You could do everything percentages or everything whole numbers. Both way works with the standard deviation, but I'm going to keep it whole numbers to make it simpler. So I have these numbers up here for the column. So three is simply subtracting column one from column two, just like it says right here, one minus two. And I refer to these two columns. Okay. And again, I'm just going to pull this down and let's just open it up. Okay. And then I'm going to square. So I'm going to take, this is three squared. So that means column three here. I'm going to take column three. I'm going to square it. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to use the caret, which is above the six number and the two to square it. And this gets rid of any negatives. So you see this negative 11. Once you square these values, the negatives will go away. And I'm going to find the sum of all the squares. So again, I'm going to go to the use uh, auto sum and I get the sum. So that's the sum of all of the squares. Okay, so the square root, I'm going to take the sum divided by n minus one. So that's our formula. So I'm going to say plus the sum and I'm going to divide by n, so n here is going to be uh, 5. n is the permutations, and we have 5 stocks, 5 permutations, and we're going to minus 1, 
which in statistical terms uh, is because of it's a sample so we're going to minus one from the permutations and that would give us um, this so five minus one is four I'm just going to put the four in here and that will give me a square so this is actually just I want the square root of the sum divided by n minus one so right now I, I just have the um, the 10850 and now I'm going to get the square root of that okay so there's a there's important to see the brackets here. so a, so this is a square root of the sum divided by n minus 1 so here I have the sum divided by n minus 1 and I'm going to use the square root formula which is sqrt and then in the I have to use brackets here. Take this cell. This bracket. Okay. So this gives me the square root. And that would be the standard deviation. So I have calculated the standard deviation here of 10.42 for stock A. So let's look at um, stock B. To actually calculate the coefficient of variation, we're going to calculate that later. But let's do stock B as an example. So again, we have the average return is also 12% here. I'm just going to make sure there's no numbers hiding. So in this case, I'm just going to put in a 12%. I'm not going to do anything fancy. And just make sure. OK, so I'm going to do column 1 minus column 2. And again, this is just, I'm just using this. This is just these um, standard deviation laid out in the spreadsheet and standard deviation I'm assuming you've learned before in other of the courses in high school and in college so I'm not really here to explain how to calculate standard deviation but how to apply it to stocks so this is just a simple template I have to apply the standard deviation to stocks so the first thing I want to do is subtract the return from the average return and then I want to square this So I'm just going to copy the formula from over here, move that over here. And it's again uh, the cell. And what's the nice thing about Excel, if I copy something and move it, it counts the spaces and keeps the same format. So I'm just going to square these. I'm going to find the sum. And again, if I just do the auto sum, and I have a sum of 40. And then I'm going to find the. Um, the sum divided by n minus 1, which we know that 40 divided by uh, 5 minus 1 is 10. And I'm going to find the square root of that. OK. OK. So, so we have the square root of 316 versus 1042. So which is more risky? Well, the, the stock with the higher, the larger number in the square root is the more riskier stock. So stock A would be riskier with a standard deviation of 10.42 compared to stock B with a deviation of 3.16, just like we thought. So when you calculate standard deviation looking at two stocks, if they have the same average returns, you, can, you could say that the stock with the higher uh, standard deviation is going to have the higher risk. And one standard deviation plus or minus the um, the average return is going to be the range um, maybe it's a I think it's like a 65 or 68 percent chance that one deviation uh, this will be your return so if we were to do that we'd say the upper limit we would have possibility of getting uh, a 22 percent return and on the lower limit, we would have the possibility of, let's see, yeah, I have to take the standard deviation minus the average. Okay, so we have a range of 22.42 to a, to a possible loss of 1.58. On the other stock, if we take the plus the deviation, minus the deviation, 
that's how we should do it. Okay. I was sorry about that. Just gonna make an adjustment here. Okay, so actually this is 22.42 down uh, at the top possibility to 1.58 at the bottom possibility compared to 15.16, one deviation at the top and added to and one deviation subtracted, 8.84. So the dispersion here is much less. The dispersion between these two numbers, figure 9 to 15, we have you know six uh, percentage points of return, just average, just rounding here and here we have about 20 so you can see that stock a is a bigger dispersion of possibilities on the standard deviation than stock b so that's why stock a is riskier now if they had different average returns so let's say let's adjust this situation and give them different average returns because if they have the same average return standard deviation by itself is appropriate and we can use that as our answer of uh, which stock is riskier. But if they had a different average return, let's um, change now, change this. So this has an average return of 12.8%. Let me just make this a bit more specific, bigger. The 13.8% average return versus the 12% average return. Now these returns are not comparable. Just playing around with it to see. Okay, so this will bring our square root down to 9.6. So, but these are not comparable because they have different average returns. So we're going to have to use the coefficient of variation to calculate the actual um, risk factor. So coefficient of variation is actually fairly simple. You're going to take the square root and divide it by the average return. for each stock respectively. Okay, so here we get a coefficient of variation of 26, and here we get a coefficient variation of 69. So whoever, whichever stock has the higher coefficient of variation is the riskier. And stock A is still risky, even though it has a higher average return, it's still riskier because the dispersion is greater. Uh, but we're using the average return to, to compare apples to apples. You know, say for example that I increase the returns here. Okay. I can increase the returns. So the average return here is 19%. And since, you know, if you have an average return that high, even though your standard, devi standard deviation here, this is a good example, because the standard deviation here is higher than the standard deviation in stock B, so you say that stock A is riskier. But you can't really say that because you can't compare two stocks with two different average returns. So we use the coefficient of variation to put them in like terms. So in like terms, because the average is so high for stock A, the coefficient of variation is 24. For here, dealing with the lower return, the coefficient of variation is only 26, which we say now stock B is riskier than stock A, uh, even though the standard deviation is higher. And so we use the coefficient of variation to take into account different average returns. Okay, so that is, if we answer question C, based on the basis of your calculation in part B, which stock is more riskier? Um, and the answer, of course, would be A. And in part D, it does the, the coefficient of variation provide a better risk comparison to the standard deviation in each case, why or why not? Well, in the original case, when they had the same average returns, it would give you the same result. But it wouldn't matter because they are already in like terms because they had the same average return. But in this case, this modified case I made, the coefficient of variation does matter, and it's a better comparison of risk because the average returns are different. Okay, so that's been the Chapter 4 handout explained. Uh, you can find copies of this on Blackboard with the answer keys. And of course, you can always look in, in the cells to get the calculations if you want to work this out on your own at home. Okay, thank you.